Can I take your coffee? Yes, of yeah. course. Yeah. Sorry. Get, Imagine if I'd be like, get. no, you cannot have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Nourish by Spinneys, the podcast which promises to inspire you to eat well and live well. I'm Tiffany Erslick. And I'm Devina Devecha. This is a space where we hope to nourish your heart and soul. On this show, we chat with leading players in the food community, from farmers to foodies, as well as health and well-being experts. It's all about engaging conversations and fresh ideas. And we have an exciting set of episodes lined up for you that we're calling The Artist and The Scientist. So over two episodes, we'll be talking to two chefs from the two iconic Atlantis properties. That's the newly opened Atlantis the Royal and the stalwart that is Atlantis the Palm here in Dubai. That is actually super exciting. Who are we starting with first? So first, we have the artist, who is Chef Grégoire Berger, who leads one Michelin star Oceano that is truly one of my favorite homegrown restaurants. I've been to Oceano just once, but it's not just the food. It's the experience of dining there from the plating to, of course, being surrounded by water and fish. Which was also the incredible backdrop for my conversation with Chef Gregoire, which you'll be able to see if you pop over to social media for our video clips from this episode. And we covered a lot of ground, or is that a lot of nautical miles, <laughs> from his love for travel and how they inspire his menu to how he's using AI. He's using artificial intelligence? Yes, you know, okay. he dropped it into a sentence while we were chatting and yeah. I was like, hang on, hang on, what are you doing with AI? Um, and he's using it to generate a number of images for his menu book, which is so fascinating. And that's why we're calling him the artist. He's wild, he's inspired, and to use his words, he can't be caged. Okay. He even calls their chef collaborations masterpieces. I absolutely love that. Uh, but I have got to say, I think he's always been like this from the start. I first met Chef Gregoire when he represented Africa and the Middle East in the San Pellegrino Young Chef 2016 final in Milan. And watching him compete there was like watching art being created. So being that creative artist runs through everything he does. And he's such a fascinating chef to talk to. And yet it's incredible to think that it was not something he planned to do at all. It happens by mistake in a way. Uh, I was not bad at school, but school didn't interest me. Uh, I was like always looking outside, I remember. And Brittany is very rainy. Um, I used to love art and craft and music and stuff like that. And my education was also on books and so on. So I was a dreamer. Like, mm. And I was always looking outside and say, well, I want to be outside living life, right? And um, I didn't manage in college to be that good. And, and I didn't know what to do. And one day, uh, my mother, when my parents split, my mother traveled to Morocco. And she was living there. So I was mm -hmm. just living with my father. And uh, he was a doctor, uh, pretty caring. And uh, he put me in a kind of a place where I had to stay the whole week at school. And, and it was a, a kind of a college where you learn mechanics and stuff like that. Oh, that was the worst thing to me. And after nine days, I told him, you have to get me out of that. Or yeah. else I, I'll get myself fired from it. <laughs> and uh, he took me out and he didn't know what to do with me. But at this time, I was partying with a lot of friends and uh, older than me. And there was chef de partie and sous chef in a Michelin star restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? It seems cool. You have freedom, you have money, uh, you can you can, you can can party. Uh, it's cool, right? So yeah. I decided to follow them. But what really gave me the trigger of wanting to be a chef, it's several tr things, right? One of them was the first chef I met. Uh, that was my first mentor, Fernand Korfmat. Uh, the restaurant was called La Closerie Cardin. And um, he told me that, you know, in life, you have two, two paths. You have the path of your friend. You you, you are where you are, where you are. You're going to be like that all your life and today. Sadly, uh, 20 years after, 24 years after, my friends still did exactly the same thing, on the same bar doing the same thing. Didn't achieve much, but maybe they're pretty happy. I, I have no really uh, idea about that, right? But this is not the, the life I wanted. Or else you just follow what I'm telling you, I teach you, and then I will place you in different other mission star restaurant, and you're going to build a career, and hopefully it's going to work well for you. And uh, it started this way. And uh, so I was a little bit in between for many years, but I, I really love the kitchen. I really love the discipline as well, because I was not really disciplined, uh, not being a bad kid, right? But again, I was a dreamer. So, uh, I, and I think this reflects to me today. Yeah. Uh, even working in Oceano in Atlantis, where I'm not really disciplined in a way that I do my, the things the way I, I, I feel it. And this is the only way for me to be happy. And uh, and then I fall in love with the, the craftsmanship, the products. I was outside back then. Everybody today is making a fuss of being locavore, having a, a great products and stuff like that. But we used to have a garden back then. I used to pick rhubarb. Yeah. By the way, this is, we have seven kind of bales 
we have to have flowers and everything. And today everybody is making flowers around. We used to do that 24 years ago. Yeah, it it is crazy the way everybody sort of obsesses about this now and pretends like it's something new. But yeah. if you actually look back into, you know, as you say, 20, 30 years ago. It means that we didn't understand much. Yeah. Because we are, we or we learned the wrong way. Yeah. While yeah. the best way to cook is to pick something on the ground on season and, mm. and, and caring about it, growing it, caring about your animals, slaughter yeah. your animals and, yeah. and do your food out of it. Yeah. But we are so in, in a generation of pre-made everything yeah. that we, some people and some chef most probably doesn't even know what a, a, a full pig look like or a full yeah. cow look like and, yeah. and what are the parts and everything because you, you buy a strip line or buy a tenderloin but you don't even know where this is situated. Yeah, and this is a story that maybe said that is that we always go back to the roots to make wow, oh, it's so nice, so cool. Like in France, right now there's a kind of a trend where it's all about the broth. Yeah, everybody's excited about the broth. Yeah, broth is the first thing you learn at school, right? <laughs> yeah. So I was apprentice. Huh? Just, yeah. I didn't mention that. So what was interesting is that at 14 I started to be at work, and one time, one one week a month I used to be at school, but at school at night they was calling me to go in the kitchen. So I was 14, I was working maybe wow. 15, 16 hours a day. I love that. Yeah, that's really good. And I mean, that does teach you discipline from such a young age, yeah. as you say. And yeah. the fact that you've stuck to it, you know, um, yeah. what keeps you in this, like, since 14? Travel and photography. So yeah. I got graduated and yeah. I got an accident. Yeah. got an accident. Not, not much people know, but I got an accident. I fall from a cliff in Brittany. I, I, I broke 12 ribs. I was a pretty spiritual kid. I was saying I was always wondering what life is like that and I, what's the purpose and so on. And I had a few accidents along the way and I felt that if I keep going the way I was drinking a lot, partying a lot and so on. And I thought that if I keep going this way, something bad will happen for real. This really scared the, the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. So I uh, I decided to move. So I scrolled on the site, on the website that was called Lotelry. Um, and it was a lot of offers and everything. I put my finger on one destination. It really happened like that. And mm -hmm. I said, yeah, this is where I'm going to go. It was a two mission star restaurant in Andorra, which is between Spain and France. And I started off like that. Wow. And then I travel, and this is the menu that you had from that, where I travel in many different countries. Um, the fact of traveling gave me freedom. So you asked me why I, it kept me grounded and, and, and being wanted to be a chef. I was bored very fast. I haven't been really chef de party in a long time. I ended up being sous chef and head chef almost the, uh, out of school. So I had to learn from my own mistakes. But I had to learn mostly alone. Even if I work in an amazing restaurant along the way, um, I had the feeling that I wanted to do the thing my way, with my feelings. And then I, uh, I met my wife. And I, when I met my wife, I bought a camera and I started to learn photography. And this is a very short version of the question you asked me, but I started to love beauty. And I started to love making able to create something beautiful, to capture it my way, the way I think, to share it. And it was Facebook by then. And, and I started to have an interest of showing what we do and making beautiful things. And, and it was exciting, right? And then it started really to um, keep me into the field till I came to a channel where I started to become uh, capable of telling my own story through my own food mm. and being I, proud of it. I love that, that you use photography because I think it, um, it helps I mean, in an obvious way, but it helps people see the way that you see the world, like whether you, the way you might see light or pattern or where you find beauty or exactly. the angle that you take something. Yes. It's, it's so subjective, but it, yeah. it really like shows like you food. into your, yeah. It's like, it's like food. And yeah. I, I, I can go even farther than to say music, mm -hmm. cinema, yeah. uh, theater, yeah. food, uh, anything that touch your soul, right? It could please me. I mean, I'll be very honest with you. I could stop being a chef tomorrow. Will I miss it? I don't even know. I could do something else that we love. Yeah. You know, traveling all the world and making photography. And I know I'm I'm a lot into AI. I'm trying to understand how things work, use it yeah. for my work as well. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I'm like the flow of this aquarium. That's why this place was the best for me. First yeah. Because it relates to the ocean and to where I come from in Brittany. Yeah. Also, it's a constant motion. Yeah. And me, I don't like to be stagnant. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. Now you can pick that up though, being around you. Like you've got a great energy that, you know. Yeah, that, I don't yeah. know. I'm just speed, <laughs> right? I'm How always... are you using AI? I'm intrigued. But, you know, uh, and, and that's why people yeah. don't understand the power of AI. Yeah. The book that you had, where I created Escal. Yeah. So I created a whole book that is my menu for who doesn't know. And I created it entirely. And I need to generate pictures out of it. Because 
let's say I want to represent myself in Brit Brittany sitting on a bench. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of the pictures from my family, I don't have exactly the scenario, right? So I can prompt it mm -hmm. and get exactly in a in an abstract way or in a moody way, in a turn or whatever, and I can yeah. just picture it. Okay. So I, I started to prompt images that I look very real, yeah. represent the moment um, that are abstract to make sure that it's not really uh, showing me mm -hmm. or the idea yeah. or using uh, just getting a leaf. I want one leaf yeah. put on my book. How do I generate it to make sure? So AI and prompt help me to a lot creating a, a visual, visual support of I think what's interesting is that you, you know, this is your third chapter with this yes. new menu. And um, the, the fact that you're drawing just on such authentic stories and your experiences yeah. and, you know, as you say, yes. um, when you're coming up with the, like these menus and, and this one in particular, like how, how long does it take and how do you do this? Like, do you just, do you sit down and write, I'm going to do this today and I'm going to start brainstorming? Or is it like a collection that you just write down for like months and months and then you put it all together? It's a bit of everything. Yeah. I always say when people and I guess ask me every day, how did you come up with something like that? And yeah. I always say it took me 20 years just to be able to have the capabilities of thinking about it and, and putting it on the paper. But um, to be honest, at the book, it took me two months to do this book. Mm -hmm. I took the backbone of the menu that has already certain certain locations, certain memories, certain mm -hmm. things, and I create a scenario. So usually we create the story and with the story we create the dish. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes we create a dish and we try to put the story on the top, but it's more difficult. Yeah. So like we have this uh, this uh, hot dog here that was yeah. about New York. One of my favorite. Oh yeah. my gosh. Uh, about New York City. Yeah. And... Uh, I was at this moment on, on the journey of, because I wanted to, for Escal, the third chapter of Oceano, um, I wanted to tell my story from my, being a, an apprentice to re, being in Dubai mm -hmm. many years, like a decade or, or more. Uh, so I took every where I've been in all my life. So I started to put, uh, make a pattern of that. And then I started to uh, draw a story, which is a real story, but like Jamaica come at this time mm -hmm. and, and Florida come at this time and New York come at this time, but New York doesn't come at this time. So I need to get inspired to make sure that the dish will be cold, too warm, too hot, too mm -hmm. dessert, um, using this pattern. But sometimes it's not easy yeah, because you are, you frame yourself. And the concept of tales and travels through food, which is what I call Ciano yeah. uh, identity, give me space. Mm. And I need space to work. Yeah. If you tell me I open a French restaurant tomorrow, I'll do it, but I will not work in it. Mm -hmm. I'll put someone else to take care of it. Yeah. Simply because I don't want to frame myself to something that is too defined. Yeah. Art. And I believe what we do is art. Um, it's a wider thing. Absolutely. I mean, each course is like a work of art and it's, and it's know. from the it's the whole experience. It's from the person coming and talking about it beforehand at the table. It's what you're being shown. It might be something that you can interact with. Um, but that's the thing. It's also, immersive. You know, it's you know. When I say, well, you imagine you have the pattern. Yeah. Then you have the story. But then, how do you link the story to the dish to the yeah. flavor? Yeah. So this is what is the most complicated. Yeah. Because when you have a, the fourth course, a candle that is a foie gras candle that you cut, you decant the wine out of it, yeah. and the guest doesn't understand what's going on. Everything. When you do that at the fourth course. What do you do at the fifth? Yeah. What do you do at the sixth? Yeah. People doesn't realize that because yeah. when you go and you go in the cinema and you know, watch an amazing movie, um, you don't ask yourself. You're not here to, when you pay for a movie. You're not, you're not here to understand how, how many months they spend on it and everything. You yeah. just take it yeah. and, and you spoil about it and it's cool, right? Yeah. What we do is the same thing. People are not paying to be aware of the amount of work that comes yeah. behind, but yeah. it's a lot of work. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I hope people respect and do yes, think most, like, most oh do. my goodness, this is a lot of work. You most, know? most do. Yeah. Some don't, but this is also yeah. why we're in Dubai. Yeah. In Dubai, you have so much demographic and yeah. people coming from around the world. You cannot expect people to. And I think we are giving, yeah. giving people. We are not yeah. taking people. Yeah. So you need to give without expecting anything yeah. in return. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I liked um, just at the very beginning of the meal is when you take people into the little room and you yeah. have the, um, the sort of edible plastic sachet. Yes. And the soundtrack. Yeah. You know soundtrack, seven languages we did? Yeah. I created myself as well. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. It's quite zany. Um, but yes, yeah, it's I liked more like it. to, yeah. uh, in a way, to put you in a situation mm -hmm. where you 
you start the concept, you start the, the journey with a, a kind of a speech. If you listen properly, it would give you a, an entirely uh, understanding, uh, entire uh, understanding of what you're going to live after. Yeah. Um, who are sensible? Not spoil. Yeah. Going everywhere constantly. Or who are uh, uh, awake in a way mm -hmm. will truly appreciate ocean. Yeah. Because they will understand the beauty of what we are trying to do. Mm. And some people will overlook completely. They will come. They will. Their matter will be uh, either they are not paying attention, mm -hmm. which happens very often. Yeah. And uh, or either they just come for the aquarium, yeah. but they will pick up along the way eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's there is so much things going on, so they cannot stay st static. Yeah, we cannot say we do what we do. It's subjectively, uh, we cannot please everyone, mm. and uh, taste is is and isn't subjective. Mm. Uh, what is good is good. Mm. Uh, what can please you? It's subjective because we all yeah. doesn't we don't all like to send it. So it's a very interesting what we've been able to create here because it's not a place by sense that uh, could let someone like me be. Mm. And I'm glad to be in this sense into Oceano, but also in Atlantis, where yeah. uh, I think we have one of the most amazing management, leadership, friends. Mm -hmm. Because I think we've, I have people on the top of me, like Kim Barter or, mm -hmm. or, 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 or Cedric, which is a VP in you know, FNB, uh, used to work as the executive chef here. These people are masterpiece of, of, of knowledge, of, mm -hmm. of, of drive. They work extremely hard. Yeah. But they are extremely caring. Mm. We are uh, evolving in a corporate world yeah. that is very uh, human dri uh, driven. But I, I think that, that you feel that, like when you're here for a meal, you feel that everybody sort of buys and uh, not buys in, but believes in what they're talking about. They clearly feel supported. It's a wonderful atmosphere that yeah. you know that it has been created here, and that's because, as you say, it's coming from the top down. Yeah. Um, it's and very like uh, like we say, it's endemic. Yeah, you're gonna find that. I mean, of course, there's millions of good restaurants. Yeah, but what we do here, I'm sure nobody do the yeah. same thing. At least, it's not to be good or, be or bad or better or not, right? Yeah, it's just like it's truly uh, unique. How do you see like your role? You know, are you like the conductor? Are you the the experience creator? Like what? Yeah, how you know? How would you define your role exactly? A bit like right the now? mad scientist that try to prove the world is not right, but <laughs> that he has a good point and try to educate people to the common sense thing. I'm a lot detached to uh, to um, forcing myself to be mm. uh, to be accepted as a leader. I mm -hmm. try to be by essence because I believe in it, mm -hmm. and I've. A huge luck of having an amazing people, uh, an amazing bunch of, of talented people around me. We have already on my number two. We have three sous chef, amazing, an amazing team. The front of the house is, it's it's very good. I think Ashley served you this night, mm -hmm. and 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 she's. Uh, I saw her growing in two years here from a South African girl that yeah uh, that um, had a lot of potential but didn't know what she wanted to be and yeah. and maybe having the chance to inspire her a little bit yeah and and through that uh, seeing her today being uh, an amazing bulletproof element for me mm. you know when you are in my situation after 10 years in a restaurant like this one mm -hmm. what i'm seeking is to get um people around me that love the pro not myself mm. i don't ask to be loved i think i want them to love what we do when we come back, Chef Gregoire tells me how he conceptualizes his menu, his favorite collaborations at Oceano, and perhaps one of the best answers to our nourish question. Ooh, what did he actually say? That's right after this short break. Welcome back. You're listening to Nourish by Spinneys. And let's get right back to our conversation with Chef Gregoire Berger. How much time are you getting to actually be in the kitchen? So is it when you're creating, as you're coming up with something new, like you do all of that and then you train everyone and then you sort of out or? So I create yeah. every single dish in Oceano. Uh, I create every single dish in every collaboration we do. Let's take an example. We do a collaboration with a chef and mm -hmm. the chef is from South Africa. And I want to do a, a dish about uh, uh, tacos with pulled meat and uh, jalapeno, whatever. Uh, 
And then I guess I was my chef and they asked me, okay, what do we have in mind? So I said, okay, I want this, I want the ships on the top. It has to taste casual, but be very, very beautiful. Uh, Mexico will be, for instance, uh, a three different color on the flag. We're gonna uh, drizzle. I just put out something like uh, totally randomly, but this yeah. is the way I will do it, right? Yeah. And we need to make sure that um, it has the spiciness, the kick, and, and it's very fine and, 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 and represent the kitchen of the chef coming to visit us because this is the way we do. When we do collaboration, we don't do oceano food. We create a menu as per the, where the, the chef come from, which helps us to create a lot. So anyway, so I put my team on that and they start to uh, make their own take on it, which not always works. But what is interesting is that I really taught my chefs, and especially Aurelien, to be creative on his own. Of course, we have a, frame, a framework that, yeah. uh, that is oceano storytelling and everything. So we have to respect that. But within that, do whatever you want. After we'll put it on the table, like it or not. But what they do after, I modify it. Okay. I'll do okay a bit more of that, a bit less of that, or I don't like it at all, right? And in this case, okay, this is what I had in mind. Because when I create a dish or when I put a dish on the paper, I visualize it. Okay. I yeah. never go random. So, and I visualize very fast. I want to teach to my team. And that's why when I left Oceano in 2021 and I came back uh, after a long break, um, I wanted my uh, number two sous chef at this time to be chef de cuisine. Not to me to be a executive chef or whatever. Yeah. I don't really care about that. It's more because my role as a leader, as a chef, is to make sure that my path, what I learned, has to be taken over by someone else that will have to give to someone else, right? So there is no ego really into that. Um, yeah. I'm a free mind, a free soul. I'm not afraid of having people that potentially could be better than me around. Yeah. I think you must always have people that are better than you actually yeah, around. Yeah. You know, it, so, it, um, eventually it will uh, always yeah. happen, uh, but you get better yourself. And with your collabs, I mean, you've done a lot of really cool ones. I was sad to have missed the one with Josh Nyland because yeah. I'm obsessed with uh, his yeah. fish butchery. Is is there someone that you would really still like to do a collaboration with that you haven't? Again? Yeah, or again, or, or a new person. Uh, yeah. I'll be very honest. Yeah. I think every and each collaboration we did was a masterpiece to yeah. me. Uh, of course, it has their own weakness. Uh, the food is not always perfect because it's a collaboration. And, yeah. And it, it, takes, in, it takes a lot of uh, effort and parameters that sometimes you cannot really control. I have a few that I really, really, really loved, uh, and all of them I really, really loved. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just one more, really. Uh, I loved uh, Julien Royer, uh, the chef three-star from Singapore. Yeah. For different things. The first thing is that because he owned the space the way I did. So when he was here, he was on the floor, he was on fire, and, and I felt he was much more successful than me. and. And he's an amazing, an amazing dude, right? But what I love with him is that really his food was great. Our menu was cool. He was really here with his team. Uh, I felt he could take over Oceano in three days. Yeah. But also because today we are very friends. He's the kind of guy I speak every day with him. We are always friend joke. Yeah. We have the same kind of things, right? On, only a French expatriate chef can understand another one. Yeah. And I have a lot of appre appreciation for him not being a prick after all the success that he got. Okay, yeah. He's still very human, very cool, taking a lot of time when he must be even more busy than me. Yeah. And I'm busy. Uh, I love working with Natsuko, mm -hmm. Natsuko from yeah. Italy. She was yeah. amazing because she had a, she has a soul on her, on her own. She's a, a kind of alien. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like interesting people. <laughs> yeah. A bit crazy, a bit weird. This is fascinating for me. Uh, El Cedar de Calroca, masterpiece of, uh, mm -hmm. it's like the Pope of the Spanish cuisine. Mugaritz. Yeah. Mugaritz was like mind blowing. Josh Nylon was mind blowing because this guy really taught me what I thought I knew. Yeah. I didn't know anything, which, which is very interesting because this applies to everything in life. We think we know, we don't know much, right? Yeah. So, uh, amazing chefs. It'd be incredible. Oh, it's exciting. Just listening to this. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to ask a bit about Gregoire kind of, outside of Oceano. Yeah. Um, well, I suppose it's all linked because you're using all your experiences, but um, where do you, like where's your dream destination? You don't, you, you know, that you still want to go to perhaps um, to eat, like country uh, or city or, and why? I think I'd like to go to South America more. Why before wasn't at all my, my cup of tea. I'd like to go back to Japan, but because I'm a geek as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody is like praising Japanese food and everything. I'm not a, huge fan of Asian food, mm -hmm. except Chinese. I love Chinese food. I love Japanese food. Yeah. I have, of course, every respect for the products and the techniques and the madness, but it's not what excites me most. But I love to go back to Japan because it's a planet on its own. 
And uh, I feel peace when I've been there several times. I really felt peace, safety of the heart, uh, beauty. Yeah. Um, not every country are like that. You, know, you go in Paris today, you don't find much beauty anymore. It's, it's, it's a bit of a, a mess to me, even if I'm very proud of my country and, my, my, and, and all around, right? But if you ask me where I would like to really to go back, it's maybe, yeah, maybe in, uh, in Japan, South America. You know, my wife, she always said that uh, luxurious, luxurious or wealth, it's peace. Wow, that's so powerful. She is, yeah. uh, she's so right. Yeah. I don't apply that to myself because I'm constantly, like all of us, grinding constantly. But uh, I truly believe that. I'd like to be in a place where I'm just happy to be uh, at the moment, right? And Japan was one of these places where I was like wandering in the street and just be happy right? because it's new, because it's exciting. It's there's another beauty, right? People are different. I love the way you said safety of the heart. That's yeah. exactly what it's like being in Japan. Yeah. Um, there's a kindness and there's a just, the, yeah, you've put that so beautifully. Um, talking about your wife. So she's the one who like does all the cooking at home, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And amazing Moroccan Listen, food. I didn't plan to get married. Maybe like most of us. Uh, I, was, I believe in destiny. And I thought that uh, it, was, uh, it was just coming at the right time to me. Um, it brought me a lot of um, discipline. Because my wife, she's a tough one. She's not the one you mess around with. She taught me a lot. She she expects a lot from me, and she's right. Um, she cooks very well. She's Moroccan. She has a very strong culture of uh, mm -hmm. uh, cooking. And in Morocco, women cooks more than men. So at home, I cannot cook myself. I think many chefs doesn't. First, we don't have time, and we only do that when we are at, at work. And, uh, and most especially for me, cooking in the home kitchen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the knife doesn't cut. The, I need a commie. I need, a, you know, I need to. Yeah. I need that. Where's the pathway, right? My wife. Get she the would, kids. Yeah, right? yeah. Tell them what to do. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I let I let to do. I like to go outside with my kids. Um, I always say that, but I'm someone who pay for his for his uh, happiness. I, I pay for my tranquility. Right. I buy everything me all the time to make sure yeah. that I, certain things I don't want to do, I don't do it. Yeah. I'm not someone very economic, right? <laughs> I have no, my wife always tells me that, but say, you have the money in the pocket, not, not in the heart. Okay. So I'm not a greedy guy about money. I don't really care. If you have money, use it to have a piece of the heart. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's the way I feel. Um, do the kids cook with you ever? Yeah. yeah? Well, so yeah. I taught my kids to cook. And it's very, uh, because usually when I'm off, I'd like to sleep a little bit at the yeah. morning if I can, but it's difficult when you have two girls jumping on you yeah. that you didn't see the whole week. So of course you, I know we just bought a cat. So oh gosh. I can tell you that the morning is a meow, meow, the kids and stuff. Why you pull out my hair? I think. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's happiness, but um, yeah. uh, usually the morning is my uh, uh, eldest uh, daughter, Jade. She's eight. She cooked full breakfast wow. for her. She put the egg, she do omelette and everything. She, she do some crazy, crazy things sometimes. Some pasta with ketchup and everything. <laughs> but they have a sense of cutting, cooking, uh, roasting, uh, yeah. being safe, making sure that it's not hot, yeah. mixing. Fantastic. It's, it's, uh, it's essential. Yeah. You know, yeah. I want my kids to be capable. Uh, one last question. Um, our podcast is called Nourish. So I want to know what nourishes your soul. Beauty. Mm -hmm. What feed my soul? My soul it's, it's capturing emotions. I think uh, a, a world like we have that is a beautiful world must be uh, uh, appreciated. And there's plenty of things that are made out of beauty, right? So um, I'm not saying I'm a selfish person, but I like to do what I like to do, right? Uh, it happens in the morning. I just go. I wander in the city and I go in certain shop. I do my things. It's it's freedom, beauty and freedom. Okay, it's the most important thing. I'm not someone you can cage anymore. You're actually the second person in about thirty episodes to say freedom. So very special. Who's, who, who is the, the other one? Our Christmas tree farmer. So yeah. who supplies uh, spinnies with all the Christmas oh, trees Christmas from Denmark? Tree farmer. Yeah, there's a wonderful lady Do you called know, that's Trina. The thing. Is this guy happy? Uh, she is very happy. Yeah. Um, and she, I remember being at her farm in Denmark. And she has absolutely no fences. And she said it then when I was there like three years ago, saying she values freedom so much. And then on the podcast, she said the same thing. Oh.
And you can catch our episode with Trina, our Christmas tree farmer, in your podcast app. We'll also leave you a link in the show notes. Yeah, that was a great episode. But whom do we have next? Who's the scientist? You know, this might not come as a surprise when you say the words food and scientist together. Hang on a second. Is it someone from Dinner by Heston Blumenthal? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> on our next episode, I'll be in conversation with chef Tom Allen, who's trained under Heston at both the iconic three Michelin star Fat Duck and the two Michelin star Dinner by Heston in the UK before moving to Dubai two years ago to lead Dinner by Heston at Atlantis the Royal. And that's a restaurant that has earned its own Michelin star last year. So that episode will be out in two weeks. This episode was brought to you by Spinneys and is hosted by me, Tiffany Eslick, and Davina Devecha. We're produced by Chirag Desai. Don't forget to follow Spinneys on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok for more. You can also visit us at spinneys.com where you can shop for fresh produce and a variety of local and exclusive products. Mm-hmm.